In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful good time to get your word understood clearly. Divine Father, thank you for giving us the privilege to know the truth, to do the truth, and to be blessed by the God of truth. Teach us your word. Give understanding to those that listen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to talk on scriptural water baptism of new believers. Scriptural water baptism of new believers. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15 to 17. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. 18. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Here, Jesus commissioned the believers, the disciples, to go preach the gospel and baptize those that believe. The scriptures make it clear to all the mind of God on water baptism of new believers. We are going to consider some facts, scriptural facts on water baptism. Number one, it is an emblem in the physical showing that a person has repented and accepted a change of faith or belief. A change of faith. He was believing the wrong thing before. Now he has come to believe the right thing. He was not believing in Jesus before. But now he has come to believe on the Lord Jesus. Yes. We notice in scripture that the Pharisees appeared to be baptizing their converts, whichever way, because of this right to be performed on someone that has professed faith on uh, a religion. In the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 15, the Bible tells us, Matthew 23, verse 15, saying, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, one convert. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. One proselyte, one convert. So, these converts didn't believe in the God of the Jews but they go to preach the God of the Jews to them and they believed so it, it appeared there is a right they carry on them to cause them to belong to the religion to show that they have renounced their former 
lifestyle and beliefs to believe in the message given to them as a religion. We see this practiced in Islamic religion. And you know Islamic religion uh, borrowed their activities from Judaism. So if somebody gets converted to Islam, he is also taken for special right. I think they wash them with water. Is that so? Uh-huh. They, they perform some special right on them. So, but in Christ, they should be baptized with water. Def definitely, these rites are different. They are not the same. The water baptism method in Christ is different from the ones other religions practiced, surely. John was asked by God to baptize those who repented and believed his teaching, his preaching. But before I say so, let's read Acts chapter 6 verse 5 to know one of these converts of the Pharisees or converts of Judaism which became a real Christian. A believer in Jesus and that means he had to pass through uh, Christian water baptism to as prescribed for Christians Acts chapter 6 verse 5 yes yeah, the Bible says and the saying pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Proselyte, a convert. He was not a Jew, but he was converted to the Jewish religion. And now from the Jewish religion of Judaism, he was converted to Christianity. So whatever rite was performed on him by, according to the rules of Judaism, he had to be rebaptized according to the commandment of the word of God because he had become a Christian, a true Christian, a believer on Jesus Christ, telling you what ever baptism or ride you pass through. You could even belong to a particular church but you are not born again. Whatever they did on you when you get born again and become a true believer in Jesus you have to pass through the prescribed water baptism meant for those who have repented of their sins and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the next point I'm giving, point two, John was asked by God to baptize those who repented and believed his preaching. See it in Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, verse 5. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan verse 6 and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins people went out to John as he was preaching the, the preaching of repentance and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan. This was John's baptism. It was not the baptism of Jesus. It was not baptism in the name of Jesus. But baptism unto repentance that they should change their lives 
and be willing to serve God. But as for the baptism which is in the name of Jesus hath not come. Baptism authorized by Jesus. Jesus. Baptism that is done for those who have believed on the Lord Jesus hath not yet come. John baptized those who are prepared to receive the message of God. So these were two different water baptisms. Yes. The next uh, thing, Jesus also baptized those who believed his gospel. Jesus baptized those who believed his gospel. Now let's look at that John chapter 1 verse 35. John chapter 1 verse 35. Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked he said behold the lamp of God and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He said unto them, Come and see. They came and so where he dwelt and abode with him that day for it was about the tenth hour one of the two which heard john speak and followed him was andrew simon peter's brother he first findeth his own brother simon and said unto him we have found the messiahs which is being interpreted the christ and he brought him to Jesus and when Jesus beheld him he said thou art Simon the son of Jonah thou shalt be called Cephas which is by interpretation a stone Simon and Andrew followed Jesus from John they were the disciples of John which means they were baptized by John's baptism unto repentance but that was not baptism that Jesus made for people that believed directly on him now in the book of John chapter 3 verse 22 the Bible says after these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anon near to Salim because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. Check that scripture. After verse 22, after these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. And there he tarried with them and baptized. Can you also see here? This scripture showed us Jesus baptized some people directly. What did he baptize them? He gave us the formula in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself, not the disciples now, baptized he, had, he gave us the formula of the baptism which but by the time you come to chapter 4 John chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. It shows something. 
Jesus baptized some people, the disciples that came to him. And from that time, he never baptized again. It was the disciples that continued to baptize the multitude of people that believed on him. Look at it. Paul said the same thing in the book of First Corinthians, chapter 1. I read verse 13. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? Verse 14. I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanas. Besides, I knew not whether I baptized any other. Which means I baptized Crispus and I baptized Gaius. I baptized the household of Stephanas. And that is all. For other people now did the baptism. And I continued the preaching. Verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. That's verse 18. So I did the preaching and gave the converse to others. Let them baptize them. That's a similar job. So Jesus continued the preaching and gave the converse to his disciples to baptize them but he first baptized the disciples that came to him so that they could continue to baptize others praise the lord this is what we have noticed that jesus baptized a few he baptized the disciples and made the disciples to baptize others because that is a heavy work to be taking dipping them in water bringing them up one person cannot do that and have strength we the converts were so many so jesus allowed the many disciples to do the baptism so that he could reserve his strength to do the preaching he's still together he preached the people got converted. He asked the, the disciples, go and baptize them. Paul preached. The people got converted. He asked his disciples, to those, uh, those walking with him, to go and be baptizing them. So, that is how it went. Again, number five. Water baptism is not salvation. John chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 8. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that i said unto thee ye must be born again the wind bloweth where it listed and thou hearest the sound thereof but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth so is everyone that is born of the spirit so 
Many people misconstrue this scripture to mean water baptism makes a person born again. Never. Then, there shouldn't be preaching. There should just be baptism. There shouldn't be preaching. Then, Jesus was not making people born again. It was his disciples who were baptizing people that were making them born again. Or else, Paul was not making people born again. It was, the disciple, it was the followers of Paul that were making them born again. If we say it is water baptism is what makes a person born again. No, it is not. Jesus preached. The people believed in him and God saved. Then the disciples baptized them as a sign, a physical sign that they have been born again. Paul preached the people repented and accepted Jesus. Then those who walked with Paul baptized them in water as a sign, as an emblem that they had become born again. They had accepted the gospel of Jesus. So don't equate water with salvation, born again experience. But what does water stand for in scripture? It stands for the word of God. Look at it in the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 25 to verse 27. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Was Jesus sprinkling water on people? He was rather preaching the word to them. That word stood for water that cleanses sin away from you. That word stood for water. And the, uh, the Bible tells us in Psalm 119 verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Can you see what cleanses people? It's not water. It is the word of God. So I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be cleansed. It is the water of the world that will cleanse you. As you hear the preaching, you change your mind. You are cleansed from sin. See it in John chapter 15. Verse 3. John chapter 15. I read verse 3. The scripture here says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. What cleanses the world? Born of water, therefore, means the word of God has come and cleansed you. The word of God has come and cleansed your life. That is what it means by born of water. That is it. The word of God has come into your life and has cleansed your life showing you have been born of water look at it in the book of first peter first peter chapter 1 verse 23 being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abided forever so you see, except one is born of water and of the spirit, it's by the word. You hear the word. Accept the word. And then the word changes your life. Hence, those people who teach that 
water baptism is born again makes one a Christian. They are not teaching correctly. Water baptism is not what takes away the sins you have committed. It is not. It is the word of God. Now, go back to Ezekiel chapter 26, where we read, 36, where we read. Let's continue from verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. There are two spirits here. Your, your own spirit shall be renewed. And then, this is going to be done by the Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit is going to take the word of God that you have heard, that you have believed, and cleanse your life, remove sin from your life, and then quicken your dead spirit that is unconscious about God. That spirit will quicken into you and become new in the sense that it is now God conscious. Is now carrying the love of God. It's now making you inside willing to obey God. And this is the working of the Holy Spirit. That I and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And yes, I keep my judgments and do them. Back to John chapter 3, verse 5. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He's speaking back to what he had said in Ezekiel. The water is the word that I will sprinkle unto you. I will preach it unto you. They will preach the word unto you. The word will enter into your life. Then the Holy Spirit, born of the Spirit, will take this word and work out a new thing in you, a new person in you, and empower you to serve the Lord. You will do righteousness. This is what makes you born again. Then water baptism follows this one. Water baptism follows salvation when this is done you are saved you are born again your sins are forgiven water baptism follows repentance and faith in christ and faith how does faith come is through hearing of the gospel of the word of god faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's what scripture says. So, when this faith comes, and by the hearing of the word, and you believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit works out righteousness, salvation in your life, born again in your life, by the coming in of the word, which you have heard you become born again. Then we, you can understand why infants should not be baptized. They have not heard the word. Faith is not formed in them. Why? They have not heard the gospel with understanding. They have not heard the gospel with understanding. As a result, don't baptize them. Who are those to be baptized? Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. It says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, 
and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized. You get it now. How does, how does he believe? Is by preaching. Then these little children that are playing about, how have they believed? Have you seen that child consecrated to believe, to hear the gospel? There is an age in which concentration is not possible to a child. And there is the, that is the age of non-accountability. The child is not responsible for his sins at that age because he does not know what he is doing. It's like somebody who is sleeping and as he is turning his, himself, he hits you with his leg. You look at him, he's deeply sleeping. Is he responsible for what he has done? No. Will you not blame him? No, he's not. He's sleeping. He's unconscious. So God does not blame the little child of his life. Though there are sins there, he does not blame them because they have not come to the point of understanding. They don't even know what they're doing. But there is an age and this differs from society to society. There is an age it differs from individual children depending on how they have been exposed there is an age in which they are not responsible if they die they don't god doesn't count sinners on them they go to paradise they go to heaven because they are not considered sinners they are not aware of what happens they are not aware of what happens that is it if a crime happens around this environment and police comes to arrest everybody there, you were sleeping. And there's all evidence that you were sleeping and were not aware of that crime. Will they catch you? No. You're not responsible. You're not aware. So justice will demand that you should be set free. A sleeping man does not commit sin in his sleep. A sleeping man, you might even be saying, in my sleep, I slept with a woman. That is not considered a sin before God. It's a manipulation of Satan. It's not reality. Your will was not involved, except if it is in witchcraft. Then you are willingly in witchcraft. You did it by witchcraft. Then you are responsible. Otherwise, these dreams that come, you are sleeping unconscious you didn't look for any woman you didn't and you dream uh, a woman came you slept with her or a man slept with you you're not sinning so this is it water baptism therefore follows hearing of the gospel believing the gospel and that's receiving jesus as your lord and savior is then you should be baptized. See it again in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 2. The Bible tells us here, in verse 37 to 38. Now, when they had this, they were pricked in their heart. They have to hear they must be hearing first before baptism. If somebody just joined the church, has he or really heard the gospel? Accepted the gospel? Or you just say he should go and be baptized? Have you preached the gospel and he confessed to the gospel? Otherwise, why are you asking him to, be, to go and be baptized? You just go to the streets and say, yes, be baptized, be baptized, be baptized. That is not the gospel. And you'll be giving them a baptism that God has not commanded. What he says is go into the world first. Preach the word. So that the water of cleansing must be sprinkled on them. And that the spirit of God should regenerate them. It's then water baptism. So we, now when they had this, they were pricked in their heart. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, 
men and brethren what shall we do then peter said unto them repent stop your sins stop your attitude and repent every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins one person does not repent for everybody that a man repents in a house does not mean the wife and the children have repented it is every one of you in the house so water baptism is not for the whole family myself and my children okay baptize us baptize us. have the children believed have your has your wife believed why are you asking that your wife should be baptized has she accepted the gospel it is everyone that hears and gets convicted and repents that should be baptized repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins so that your sins can be forgiven repent believe on the lord jesus if you want to follow the weights as, as they arranged and they are put here you may not get the old dandiness but all things are summed up here you have to repent and believe on the lord jesus christ for your sins to be rem remitted then you need to be baptized as a public sign that you have accepted the gospel and this should be done every one of you so don't gather the whole family and say we are ready to follow jesus myself and my children so let us let them baptize us no you who are of age that have come to understanding should be interviewed one by one to see whether you have believed to hear your confession one by one that is how it should be done so the fact that you give birth to a child does not mean the child should be born it should be baptized as see how the gospel as he giving his life to christ what you come to do in the church by dedicating that child to god is good but dedication is not water baptism dedication is not water baptism god all i have is mine you can dedicate your money too for god do you but is that water baptism you can dedicate a house to god is that water baptism so you dedicate a child also to god that is not water baptism so a child does not require water baptism it has, it could be dedicated and two some are practicing this eight days before they dedicate a child eight days before they maybe they do a naming ceremony for a child because uh, the bible says uh, in the eighth day that is in the old testament not in the new testament in the new testament you can do it immediately in fact right from the womb you dedicate the child or immediately is born or after one day two days three one month one week one year whatever period you are ready to dedicate the child you do so it is not eight days we are not under the law of Moses. At any moment you are free to dedicate a child but not that is not water baptism water baptism follows repentance look at it in acts of apostles chapter 8 acts chapter 8 verse 36 and 38 and as they went on their way they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized acts chapter 8 now let's read verse 37 together one two go yes when the ethiopian you know asked philip what does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, The condition of water baptism 
is, if thou believest with all thine heart, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is it. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, not in a transient way, not in a passing way, not in a way that you're not serious, in a way that your life is not changed, that is not why we require baptism. He said, with all your heart, so, but many people are in the church. They want to be baptized or are even baptized. But their hearts, they were not fully following Jesus. Why should they be baptized? You are an adult. You have had the word. You profess that you are, you are, yeah, Jesus is my Lord. But you are a drunkard. Jesus is my Lord. You are a thief. Jesus is my Lord. You are in witchcraft. Why should you be baptized? You have not believed with all your heart. Because what, uh, the, what you say you have believed has not registered. The Holy Spirit has not worked out a change in your life because the whole of yourself have not been involved in your confession. But this man said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of of God. Verse 38. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water. Both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. On the condition of his confession. I have believed with all my heart. As I'm going now, I'm going to live a new life. To, from today, I'm going to live a new life. I've accepted. I won't go back to my sins again. Okay, then let's go. I, I baptize you. So, can you see? Then why should children be baptized? Have children believed with all their heart? When Philip refused to, be, to baptize Ethiopian, you know, although he did the preaching to him, he refused to baptize him. Why? He didn't know whether he had accepted the preaching. Even when the man requested water baptism, he said, ah, have you believed with all your heart? So water baptism is not for casual people. I'm a Christian. I'm Christ No. Have you ac truly accepted Jesus with all determination you will live for him? Or you are now living for him? For you who have believed before the water baptism is coming, maybe one week, two weeks, one month, one year before water baptism. Are you really walking in righteousness? As evidence that you have believed in Christ? Otherwise, we can't baptize you. So let's see the discipline of water baptism. So, number seven. Water baptism should be carried out on the converts without delay. How many hours expired between Philip and the confession of the Ethiopian eunuch before the water baptism? Look at it again from verse 35 of Acts chapter 8. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the, and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Can you see? It was in one journey. Philip joined the chariot, and they were moving, and he started preaching to him in that same journey. And at a particular point, as they were passing in that same journey, the man saw water. For Philip had spoken about water baptism to him if he believed in Christ. And the man saw water. And said, ah, now see, there is water here. I'm, what does hinder me to be baptized now? See water. 
The man was excited. Philip said, no, until you believe with all your heart. He said, I have believed with all my heart. They stopped and went into the body of water. And, and the Ethiopian eunuch was baptized by Philip. Look at it in verse 20, verse 39. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Can you see the presence of God in what happened? Spirit of God in Philip, spirit of God in the Ethiopian you know. Caught away Philip by the, the spirit of God. Put joy also. The spirit of God put joy also in the Ethiopian you know. Showing it, the Lord accepted what they have done. How, what a delay. Was there? No. The moment you have believed. You are free at that time to be baptized with water. The moment your convert has believed, he is free at that time to be baptized with water. Yes. Look at it also in Acts of Apostles chapter 19. Concerning the efficient Christians. Acts of Apostles chapter 19. From verse 1 to verse 5, or rather to verse 7. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper course, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost, since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? That's talking about water baptism. And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is, on Christ Jesus. So, John's baptism is different from the baptism of Jesus. It's still water baptism. When they had this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Can you see? No waste of time. When they had, they looked for water and were baptized. When they had, they were instantly ready to be baptized. Not saying, not going their own way, not leaving without water baptism for one year for six months for five years no as they had they were baptized then in verse six and when paul had laid his hands upon them the holy ghost came on them and they spake with tongues as and prophesied here we notice that the Paul was not the one that baptized them with water. Paul, rather, was the one that preached to them. Paul baptized them with the Holy Ghost by laying hands on them. And that shows water baptism and the Holy Ghost baptism are two different things. They are not the same things. This means clearly received water baptism necessary not by paul because he told us in first corinthians chapter 13 and 14 he said he named the people he baptized and told us that his war was preaching which he did to these efficient christians about seven of them now but he laid hand on them to receive the holy ghost he allowed some disciples to baptize them carry them to the river Deep them there in, in, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But as for them, up, after that happened, they came back to where he was. He laid hand on them to, to receive the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, and all the men were about 12, not 7. All the men were about 12. This thing happened instantly. Water baptism, Holy Ghost baptism can happen the same day. In fact, sometimes Holy Ghost baptism can happen to a person before water baptism. 
as seen in the case of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. Verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which had the word. And they of the circumcision, verse 45, which believed, were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they had them, verse 46, speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that this should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? He commanded them, to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Peter commanded them, please carry them to be baptized. You people should go to be baptized in water. He may not be the one to baptize them. He may not be the one. So don't insist that pastor must be the one to baptize me. Pastor must be the one to baptize me. Whether pastor or any other appointed person, it is acceptable before God. It's not a matter of pride. Be peaceful. Pastor or any other appointed person can baptize you. In Jesus' name. Water baptism is by one immersion into the body of water. By one immersion into the body of water. Not by three drop you in water one drop you in water two drop you in water three it means the meaning of the water baptism is destroyed there's no significance what does water baptism mean look at it water baptism means buried with christ and rising with christ but let me give you the body of water not carry, putting water in a plate and taking small to sprinkle on you or pour on your body. No, it's not that. See the examples of scriptural water baptism in the book of John chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. John chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. The Bible says, After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Enon near to Salim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. Why did they baptize in Enon? The reason was because there was much water. If it is to fetch it in a plate, it's in your house. You just fetch water in a cup or in a plate and say, I baptize you. This is not scriptural baptism. Much water there. And John baptized in the river Jordan. Look at it in Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. John baptized in river Jordan where there was much water there. In verse 3. Luke chapter 3 verse 3. And he came into all the country about Jordan preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Verse 12. Then came also publicans to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? He told them the condition. Then let's go on the baptism of Jesus. In verse 21. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Ghost descending in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, indeed I am well pleased. 
Look at it in the book of Matthew, chapter 3. Matthew, chapter 3. Jesus' baptism by John. We read, and let's read from verse 13 to 17. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, So far it to be so now, for thus it becoming us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, he allowed him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Out of the water. He went into the water to be baptized. And after that came out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. How will you not be baptized after the pattern of Jesus? Jesus himself entered into the body of water and was baptized by immersion. Why will you not be baptized after the pattern of Jesus? That all this while you have not gone to get rebaptized thinking that, that your sprinkling is baptism. Follow scripture. This is scriptural water baptism. Thank God for the missionaries that came early time. They didn't come with the full knowledge of the gospel. They didn't come with the full knowledge of scripture. But thank God, whatever they deposited has grown up as a small tree to a mighty tree now. We can take shelter under the tree. You could not take shelter under the, the thing they planted because it was not full. But now it's full. You can take shelter. Why don't you practice the full thing now that the Lord has opened your eyes to see? Even if you are a pastor, a church founder, you need to go back to be rebaptized. You need to Forget about the one the missionaries taught since it's not scriptural. Go for the scriptural one because before God, he does not see a difference between master and servants. We are all servants before him. That is what you need to know. We are all children before our father and the children must follow his rules. Thank you. So, that is what we need to understand. That it is one immersion into the body of water. And we have seen it in Ethiopian, you know, that he saw a body of water. Definitely the Ethiopian, you know, had a jug of water in his chariot. He should have a gallon of water to drink as he goes. And that was enough to use to baptize a hundred people by some of these churches. It's just to pour a little in the hand and put it on your head. Many. But it's not that one. It is a body of water. He saw a body of water and now stopped the chariot. Let's go there. Baptize me. Please seek for baptism in, by immersion. Again, number nine, water baptism of Christians as a physical sign to show they died with Christ and ha, I mean, is a physical sign to show that they died with Christ and have risen with him into a new life. Christ demonstrated it when he went to John. I am going to die but I shall rise. That was water baptism. I am going to die, but I shall rise. And the Bible says, it is given unto me to die. How many times? To die once. If somebody fainted and came back to life, he has not died. 
Because real dying, you don't come back to life. If somebody, in fact, life is taken away completely, but he came back after some hours, it is not that dead. The Bible is talking about. It is exit from earth. Not to come again. And that happens once. To a person. He died. Does not come back to life. That happens only once. One time. To a person. So baptism. Showing death with Christ. Is one immersion. Because it is appointed unto me. Once. To die. Therefore, you are buried in water with Christ only once. Then you rise up with him to the newness of life. Christ demonstrated it before he died. And he dead. When he actually finally died, he was buried once. He was he died once, buried, and he resurrected into a new new life altogether. And it's alive forevermore. Amen. He resurrected and became alive forevermore. So it is expected of believers. In your baptism, do it like Christ's own. Be identified with Christ. Both in his baptism and in his death and burial. But yours is dead to sin. Rising up in Christ. That is the sign in your life. Look at it in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. The Bible says, Buried with him in baptism. Can you see? Buried with him in baptism. Wherein also ye are risen with him. Through the faith of the oppression of God. Who had raised him from the dead. Jesus was buried in his baptism. And raised up. Yours should be like that. Jesus was buried in his dead. You. Show the sign that you have identified with Jesus. But being buried in water. And they rise you up. A new man in Christ. It is an emblem. Not that the actual, the actual thing has really happened. But show it physically. It's a badge. You should wear. You have come to the conference. Wear your badge. Your ID card. Is essential. You are a student. But let's show your ID card. Because they will be checking on ID card. Let them not check and see you don't have ID card. And you say, no, but I'm a student. The security officer will not understand you. Because you are like any other person. So have your ID card. Baptism is like ID card, identity card. That shows you are a Christian. One that has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. So wherever they're checking anything... Security, whichever security, I leave that to God. That is checking, he will find that you have your ID card. Make sure you are baptized in water. Water baptism number 10 is in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is what Jesus commanded in Matthew chapter 28 Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And you all say, Now, when did Jesus say this? After his resurrection. 
And the Bible says, Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled where? In heaven. Until heaven and earth shall pass, no jot or tittle shall pass from your word unfulfilled. And what Jesus said here is baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Although it was not stated, I believe that when Jesus baptized himself, this is what he did. It was in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I believe when the disciples were baptizing for him, it was in the name of the Father, the same formula he used, in the name of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, it is established at resurrection. Established at resurrection. Who came to change it? That some people now say the apostles were led by the Holy Ghost to change the scripture, to break the scripture, which says, Thy word is settled in heaven forever. Who said, No title, no job can pass will pass unfulfilled by the world. The disciples had the power to change this. No. No. The disciples didn't have the power to change this. But they said that by the Holy Ghost, the disciples changed this. By the Holy Ghost, Let's see what Jesus himself said concerning the Holy Ghost. In the book of John, chapter 16, let us read from, from verse 13. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. What did the Holy Ghost hear from Jesus concerning water baptism? What the Holy Ghost heard from Jesus was that they should be baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. That is what he had. Because Jesus said, the Holy Ghost shall not speak of himself. But what he shall hear, he shall speak. So, the Holy Ghost did not hear from Jesus saying, baptize them in the name of Jesus. He didn't hear from Jesus like that. So, don't accuse the Holy Ghost that he misled you from the words of Jesus. Don't accuse the Holy Ghost that he mislaid the church from the words of Jesus who said, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That is what Jesus said the Holy Ghost will do. He shall hear of me and shall tell it to you. So, this is very, very clear. He shall hear of me and shall tell it unto you. But then, what does it mean by baptizing them in the name of Jesus? In Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? And in many other portions 
of the scripture where it was stated that the people were baptized in the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 8, in verse 14 to 17. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was falling upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What does this mean? Baptism in the name of of the Lord Jesus. Let's understand one thing. In the book of Matthew, chapter 21, the Bible tells us in verse 23, And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, by what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it from heaven or of men? By what authority was the baptism of John? Where did it come from? Who authorized him? And they, they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. <laughs> you, can this, you can see it, we cannot tell. This thing you are doing, who authorized you? The disciples said, we, are, we baptize by the baptism Jesus authorized us. We are baptizing by the baptism Jesus commanded us. That's the meaning. And the baptism Jesus commanded us is baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It is not the baptism John, his people, his disciples, we are not baptizing with that baptism. But by the baptism, Jesus commanded us. If the Pharisees were baptizing their converts, it's not by the baptism. The Pharisees baptized their own proselytes. It is by the baptism, Jesus authorized us, instructed us. The people are interested in the authority that is making you to do a thing. They were asking Jesus here, who authorized you? Because they don't want to believe that God sent him. Jesus now asked them, you people were going to John. Who authorized John? That's why they say, if we say God in heaven authorized John, he will say, then why didn't you believe in God? You are hypocrites, you are unbelievers. They will stone them with stones. If we say, no, human beings authorized John. Ah, <laughs> we are terrible unbelievers. The Jews that are here, just as you see Muslims stoning, at, stoning people because they say, ah, it's, it's blasphemy against our prophet. Their own blasphemy against the name of the Lord. The punishment is stone them with stones. They will carry all the Pharisees outside the city and stone them to die. They feared. So, the best thing is to say, we do not know. So they're talking about authority, which is in the name of who? You did this by whose name? 
That is, in whose authority? Whose name? It's just that somebody came to you and, and said, eh, please, I'm coming to carry five chairs from here. You said, who sent you? You want to know the authority behind him. Is that authority qualified to make five chairs to leave this place? He must give you a name. Who authorized you? Who instructed you? So the disciples were ba baptizing because Jesus instructed them. And people should have known Jesus. Because the thing was not done in a corner. The life of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, the death of Jesus at that time was not in a corner. And it, besides, it is preached and made open to people to understand. So, they baptized them in the name of Jesus. In the authority of Jesus. As Jesus authorized. Amen. Again, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Why? God the Father played role in that convert. God the Son played role in that convert. God the Holy Spirit played role in that convert. Baptize, submit the convert to these three persons. Although it's one God, submit the past convert to these three persons. And the converts and now for heaven they are not for earth the name jesus is earthly it's not heavenly name he was not jesus when he was in heaven he was god he bore the name jesus when he came to the earth matthew chapter 1 we read verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins who named the who named him jesus It's joseph joseph named him jesus but who is this jesus verse 22 to 23 now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is what? Is what? As for eternity, he is God with us. He is God. He is God. But on earth, he is Jesus. Which means the Father's name is not Jesus. The Holy Spirit's name is not Jesus. At nowhere in the whole scripture was the Father addressed Jesus. At nowhere, in nowhere in the whole scripture was the Holy Spirit addressed Jesus. It's only the man of Calvary because he had taken on the body of man that was called Jesus. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 5 to 9. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, when he became man. He was God. But he had become man. He didn't want to carry God about. This is what, what happened, verse 7. But made himself of no reputation. Came down low. And took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And every man has a name. My name is Paul. You have a name. I am Paul, the son of Rika. 
you are as a human being being a man you have a name the son of somebody he is jesus the son of god because he's a man he must be the son to somebody and he since he's not a son of any human being he's the son of god he became a son because he's a man otherwise he has he is equal with god he is God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And he was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. He is God. But being formed as a man you shall call his name Jesus. So he is not the only person responsible for the convert. In John chapter 3. John chapter 3 verse 14 to 16. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God the Father loved the world so much that he gave his only son. He became a son because he is in the world among men and is the son of God. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. You see the role of the Father in the salvation of man? He sent Jesus, the Son. Now, in John chapter 16, we see the role of the Holy Spirit in human salvation. Verse 8. Let's read verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. If I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Can you see? God the Father sent Jesus. And Jesus said, I am going back. I will send the, the, Son, the Holy Ghost. So don't mind the sending. It's one, it's one God, but it exists in three separate components, persons. Each is called God. Each is called God. God the Father sent Jesus the Son. Jesus said, when I go back, I will send the Holy Spirit unto you and what would the holy spirit do when he comes and when he is come he will reprove the wall of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more or of judgment because the prince of this world is judged i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how by how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he shall show you things to come he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you can you see all things that the father had are mine therefore said i that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you he shall take of the father take of me take of the father is one because the father gave them to me and i give them to him we are one we'll be doing the same thing so the whole these persons in the godhead that convert should belong to them to one god not only to the humanity of jesus then the father is not involved if jesus were if the, if say jesus married a woman let us say if say then that woman would just be the wife of jesus it won't be the wife of the father it wouldn't be the wife of the son that is clear so to show you jesus is man jesus was tempted 
But what does the Bible say about God? Say about God. It says God cannot be tempted of anyone. Can God be tempted? No. But Jesus was tempted. He was tempted because he was a man. He was tempted because he was a man. But God, Satan cannot tempt God. Satan cannot, cannot tempt God. That is what the word says. Why? God cannot sin. God cannot sin. So, Satan cannot tempt God. But Satan carried Jesus, the man Jesus, to tempt him. So, differentiating this. So, that is why the convert is to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, let's give the following comments and questions on water baptism and observe some contrary practices let's see what are these contrary practices question number one does a backslider need water baptism on return to faith in Christ the answer is no Peter did not do that after his restoration Peter backslid completely denied Christ but the Lord restored him was he rebaptized? No. Baptism is once. If you were really born again, baptism is one. If you were given an ID card, for any reason, you left the school. For whichever month, when you are coming back to school, will you come with another ID card? If your ID card is valid, will you come with another ID card? No. That ID card that was given to you, is the one you should use. The baptism is once. So even if you backslid for one day, for two days, for one week, for ten years, if you come back to Jesus, that baptism you did the other time stands for you. Amen? Again, what can one do when he discovers he was baptized wrongly? If you were baptized before you were born again, you need baptism now that you are born again. The present baptism you will do is the correct one according to biblical instruction that says repent and be baptized. That says go preach the word of God to every creature. He that repents believes and is baptized. So, now that you have repented, you have believed, you can now be baptized. The old one that you did before you knew Jesus, before you were, your life changed, before you were born again, that one was not water baptism. In some of these churches, I had the story of a, a boy that confessed. He said the day he was baptized in water, he, in the church, his girlfriend came that they should celebrate the water baptism. And they celebrated the water baptism. So the girlfriend too was, a time came, she too wanted, she too went to church to be baptized. He also said, let's celebrate it too. Is that Christian water baptism? Were they born again? That is not water baptism. Now when you have repented and given your life to Christ, from that period, be baptized. He said, but I don't know whether I was born again at that time. Okay, now. Don't, doubt, don't walk in doubt. He doubt that test in it. Whatever is not, or is not of faith is sin. Now that you are not sure, go for another water baptism. Yes. If you were baptized using wrong methods, sprinkling or any other way, that was not the scriptural pattern. Go for scriptural pattern one immersion in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost if you were baptized by three immersions you need rebaptism go for a rebaptism by for only one immersion because it's appointed unto men once to die and jesus died once 
he shall not come to die the second time. One immersion. If you were baptized in the name of Jesus only, you need rebaptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Because this is the word unchanging, unchangeable word of God that stands for all. That baptism in the name of Jesus is a distortion of scripture. And it is of the devil that wants to pervert the scripture. And that is the work of the servants of the devil, as we see it in Elements. If the man that baptized you was not born again, but he baptized you correctly, according to the instruction of the scripture, you do not need another water baptism. The man baptized you correctly. He came as an, or a minister. But from these other churches, you know, ah, this man is not born again. In fact, at that time, I didn't know that he was not born again. But now I know, hey, the man is even married to two wives. But the team baptized you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost by one immersion. And were you born again at that time? If you were, correcting has been done. Don't mind that the man was a sinner. Is that okay? Don't mind that the man was a sinner. Water baptism can be carried out in running water or in a still body of water. Even in the river, water runs or flows in the rainy season and may gather in some parts of the river in the dry season. What is required is that the depth of water must be sufficient to cover the person to be baptized. You get it. Some people say, no, River Jordan was flowing. River Jordan will flow in rainy season. In dry season, as according to the law of waters worldwide, or the law of streams, of rivers, many rivers become dry. But water gathers in various places. And only tiny portion of the river might be flowing, which nobody can be baptized there. But the water has gathered in a place, gathered in a place where it may not be flowing. All that is required is a, the body of water gathered should be deep enough for somebody to enter there. Which is equivalent to digging a body of water in the church premises where a, a people can go into and be baptized. A baptistry can be created in the church, filled with water for people to be baptized. So whether it is running water or a still water, it doesn't mean anything. But it must be deep enough to bury a person. Sometimes the person to be baptized is made to kneel inside the water. So that the water reaches you at your neck. The bathing you becomes easy. Just a little push, you have entered into the body fully. And then they bring you out. That is the same. Praise the Lord. That is water baptism. It's carried out already on you. Again, must one be baptized with water before partaking in Holy Communion? This is not a scriptural rule but denominational. Water baptism is for believers in Christ and can follow uh, salvation in Christ immediately. Holy Communion is also for believers in Christ anytime it is prepared. So, now that you have believed in Christ, you have right to Holy Communion because it is for believers. Sometimes the occasion may not be there. Water may not be immediately may be available. And you may need to go to another place. An arrangement has to be made and it may take some days to happen. And Holy Communion comes up before that. You are a Christian. It's a, it's a celebration for those who have believed in Christ. Now that you have believed in Christ, join your brethren to celebrate it. It might be some churches notice that their members are taking are being truant concerning water baptism. They're lazy. 
So they say, okay, if you don't get baptized, you won't eat Holy Communion. As a way of compelling their members to be baptized in water, that is just their own principle. But it's not scriptural commandment to be observed. Again, must there be baptismal class before what water baptism is carried out? This is not an instruction of scripture, nor is there example in scripture for this. But wisdom can occasion this in a local church with growing children and adults or adult members who join the church as sinners. This may be done to ascertain their salvation. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. The Bible says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Amen. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. These children that are jumping up and down, you have been watching them. They are becoming adults. They are yet, they are not baptized. And some will say, eh, do you, how many of you want to be baptized? They will raise up their hands. But no, I'm not sure. This person has changed. Let me pass them through teaching to make sure they understand this thing very well so that they won't come up tomorrow and say, at the time I was baptized, I was not clear. Let's make them clear. Let's organize baptismal class for them. Or some of these men that come in, you're not sure how they are. We're not in haste. Please, let's organize baptismal class for one month for them or for a period for them so that we can check them to ensure they have received the proper conviction of salvation before we baptize them. This is wisdom, but it is not, in the, it's not a general practice. It's, a, it's exception, not the rule. So, we have tried to follow this matter clearly to ensure there is no ambiguity in this matter of water baptism. Because Satan uses these things to cause people to miss heaven. Now, the question again comes, what about those who delay in water baptism? If they are not baptized, will they make it to heaven? I say no, they will not make it to heaven. But they have been Christians. In fact, they have even been practicing righteousness. The Bible says, He that keepeth all the word of God and offense in one is guilty of all. He has not been baptized. He has offended one portion of the world. He cannot make it to heaven. Again, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, man must live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the question now comes, then why did the thief on the cross make it to paradise? Yes, because our God is a just God. The thief in the cross repented at the cross, believed in Jesus at the cross, the dying moment, and did not have opportunity to repent, to go and be baptized. God is witness to that. And so, the just God, the just God, did not condemn him. Look at it in the book of Genesis. 
chapter 18. I read from verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein that be far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked and that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right is the judge of all the earth is the God of justice how could this thief have come down from the cross to, bat to go for baptism who could go to the cross who had authority seeing the place was guided by the Roman soldiers who had authority to go and remove the thief to go and dip him in water shall not the judge of all the earth do right then the Lord says if I see to see the answer the Lord gave and the Lord said Verse 26, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sins. I will do justice. I promise you, if there is a genuine reason, it's only God that knows what reason that he can allow. But we knew it of the cross where these thieves were crucified. The thief that believed on him had no opportunity. Yes, some people in the hospital bed repented and died with that opportunity. The God of justice will do right. But what will he say of you? For who have been free? You say you're born again. One month, you have not asked for water baptism. And here we have a baptistry. You have not talked about being rebaptized, knowing the, having the knowledge of truth talk to you clearly. And you are living like that, ah, by the grace of God, I'm not sinning. And you have refused purposely to be baptized. Even giving you true teachers that have taught you and set you free from confusion. You refuse purposely to be free from confusion. And you die. Don't hope for heaven. Don't hope for heaven. Because you didn't keep the word of God. You broke his commandment. You broke his commandment. That's why in the book of Mark. Chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Verse 15 to 17. The Bible says. And he said unto them. Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Can you get it now? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. How many things equal to salvation? Believe and baptized equal to salvation. But there is some, a provision made because of some people that may not have opportunity for this baptism. Verse, uh, verse 16 said, But he that believeth not shall be damned. He, be, he is damned because he believeth not. But he that believes shall not be damned. Although he is not baptized because of some justified reason. Yeah, the scripture made provision for that. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not. Why didn't the Bible say he that believeth and is not baptized shall be damned? No. There shall be some people that shall believe but will may not be baptized because of some circumstances. They shall not be damned because of their circumstance. But for you who have believed and is not baptized, salvation is not mentioned on you. Then you now say, ah, but I'm born again. This is salvation. Yes, you are born again. The salvation here 
is speaking of final salvation. Leaving the earth to enter heaven. But from the, for the earth, you have believed in Christ. He that believeth in the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. You are saved. Yes, you are, not, you are not committing sin, you say. You are living righteous. But you have not fulfilled the word of God. There is a thing God permits you to go ahead. Like you are in school. You fail your exam. A paper in one of the semesters. But the school allows you to be going on. Hoping that you will clear it eventually. You will rewrite that one. You can even finish the year, but they will not give you a certificate. Because you have a subject uncleared. You, you are finished, but they will not give you a certificate. Why? You failed that course, and the school still promoted you to the next year because you passed all other ones. They promoted you to the next year. Even from the next year, they promoted you again as you keep on passing. But that course is waiting for you to clear the final salvation. Going to heaven is the final salvation. That one will require you to fulfill everything. And the baptism which you didn't do will disqualify you. They will not give you heaven. They will not give you heaven. Why? You didn't pass the word of God. You didn't pass the word of God. Yes. You didn't pass the word of God. In the book of First Peter, here Peter was writing to people who are believers already. Verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith on, unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time is salvation you now you have believed and that belief is keeping you for a salvation that will be revealed in the last time yes wherein ye greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perished though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Read verse 9. 1, 2, go everybody. Verse 9. First Peter chapter 1, verse 9. 1, 2, go. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. The end of your faith. Making heaven. But as for now, you are believing and rejoicing. You are born again. You are happy. Remember, you go to heaven on the basis of holiness. Holiness means obeying all the word of God. Why have you not obeyed? Why have you not believed? This final salvation. As he said, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time for your life, at the time of your death. Or at the time of the rapture. You will not make the rapture. You will not make it. Because you are not, you are not, you are, you are, you are not baptized in water. You were lazy. You were careless. You were in a church that didn't know this truth. And you didn't leave that church to go to a church that knows the truth. Will you blame God? He said, he told you already, follow righteousness, faith, charity, with them that serve the Lord out of a pure heart, with the true people. And the church invited you, saying, that ye may have fellowship with us. Truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. That which we have heard and seen, teach, make we known unto you. So that you should have fellowship with us. You will reject it. Should God now give you heaven? Are you not stubborn and self-willed? Should God give you heaven? Never. Why did you reject? Why were you lazy? 
Where were you careless and were not baptized? You can be saved from sin and be managing on as a believer in Christ, but entering heaven. Baptism must be there. Water baptism has to come to show that man must live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Thank you so much. Let's rise up upon our feet and thank God for this. Pray for yourself. If you are not correctly baptized, go for it. Children who are of age, why are you not baptized in water yet? Because you are not born again. If you are born again, go and look for water baptism. If you are born again, go for water baptism. I'm talking to you children. You are of age. You are not baptized with water. Which means you are not ready for heaven. That shows you have not yet believed in Jesus Christ. Thank you God for opening the eyes of your children. Glory. Expand it. In Jesus Lord, let this knowledge go and overcome error. Let this knowledge spread to all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816 902 3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved hallelujah Jesus I believe in you you are my
Jesus, I believe. 